Here we have three awesome handheld gaming PCs, but which one is right for you? Well, let's hash it out. Back in the summer, we took a look at the Asus ROG Ally and how compared to the Steam Deck. But since then, we've had another challenger join the fight with the arrival of the Legion Go. Well, actually one and a half new rivals if we're really counting the new OLED Steam Deck which we have right here. So, as we approach the end of the year, it feels like a great time to do, you know, a little face-off between three of the most popular gaming handhelds on the market. First, let's talk design. The ROG Ally, the OLED Steam Deck, and the Legion Go all kind of use the same basic template. You've got a larger screen in the middle, flanked by a pair of joysticks, some face buttons, and additional triggers, bumpers, and paddles on top and around back. All three devices also have 3.5 millimeter jacks for wired audio and micro SD card slots for expandable storage, which you know I really appreciate in the day where phones don't get that anymore. But from there, each has its own set of unique quirks and features. At 1.3 pounds, 11 inches across, and 0.83 inches thick, the ROG Ally is easily the smallest of the bunch, while also having the most straightforward build. It has a 7 inch OLED display in the center, but Asus didn't include much in the way of fancy extras, not that that's a huge deal. The Ally's most notable feature, aside from its sleekness, is probably its built-in fingerprint on top right here, which makes it faster and easier to log into Windows. This doesn't give it a huge advantage, but I do appreciate the convenience. Now, somewhat surprisingly, it also only has a single pair of rear paddles. Joysticks are responsive, but nothing out of the ordinary, and has a circle-style D-pad, which isn't my favorite for playing fighting games, but that's just me. Oh, and there's also one of Asus's XG mobile ports on top, so you can connect the Ally to one of their GPU docks. I should also mention that, unlike the Steam Deck and the Legion, the Ally is the only device here that doesn't come with a case, so you'll probably want to save some extra money to buy one if you're going to go with this option. Now the Steam Deck, in this case the new OLED model, is the middle child, weighing 1.4 pounds and measuring 11.7 inches across and 1.9 inches thick, with a 7.4 inch screen. Now aside from the orange highlights and the smoky shell on this limited edition model, the main differences are two pairs of rear paddles and dual touchpads, which can be helpful when trying to play games originally developed for mouse and keyboard. For the new OLED version, Valve also made a couple minor tweaks, including new, more durable coating on the joysticks, a less noisy fan, and some revamped internals, so it actually weighs about 30 grams less than the old LCD model. Then there's the Legion Go over here, which is the largest of the bunch, or should I say XL, because it's definitely big. Anyways, it has the biggest display at 8.8 .8 inches, while also being the heaviest at 1.9 pounds, and the same 11.7 inches across as the Steam Deck. More importantly, the Legion Go has the wildest design. Kind of similar to the Nintendo Switch, as detachable controllers and a kickstand in back, so you can prop it up on a table. And, you know, share the screen with somebody else. It also has more precise Hall Effect joysticks and two USB 4 ports, which are really nice for anyone planning on using this thing as a portable desktop, so you can plug in a bunch of peripherals without, you know, a lot of extra work. There's also a single touchpad on the right, Though that's more for navigating Windows than something you're really going to use while playing games. But that's not it, because the Legion Go's coolest party trick is that you can detach the right controller, activate the FPS toggle on the bottom, and then drop it into Lenovo's included puck, and voila! Suddenly you have sort of an ersatz vertical mouse. There's even a little scroll wheel in back. This is great because if you want to use this thing as a desktop, it means you might not have to carry a dedicated mouse around. But you can also use it in shooters, you know, hence why it's called the FPS toggle, to give you more control while aiming. Now that said, in my experience, this mode takes more than just a little bit of practice to get really good at. So unless you're an especially dedicated fan of games like Counter-Strike, it might not be your go-to option. So while the Legion Go is definitely on the chunky side, it has the most adaptable design. I also want to give Lenovo a shout out for putting this little cutout right here on the case so you can feed a charging cord through and charge the system while it's stashed safely inside. Really nice touch. Now let's talk about displays because thanks to the new OLED version, the Steam Deck can finally hang with its more expensive rivals. Well, kind of. That's because while Valve was able to increase the size of the screen up to 7.4 inches, up from 7 inches on the original model, by slimming down its bezels, you know, because it's not actually physically larger, you're still looking at an 800p 90Hz display on the deck versus a 1080p at up to 120Hz display on the Ally or a 2560 by 1600 at 144Hz on the Legion Go. Still, text just isn't as sharp on the Steam Deck and you might notice some faint color fringing too. 
However, the one thing the Steam Deck has that the others don't is an etched anti-glare matte glass display, which is available on Valve's top end configurations. So let's take a look at how it really compares close up. Now, this can be hard to capture on camera, so we're gonna do the best we can. Now, I'm gonna take one of our LED fill lights over here, and I'm gonna hold it over the Steam Deck. And you can see there still is a reflection, but it's pretty hazy and it's not super sharp, so it's a bit less distracting. But now, if I move it over the Ally, you can see almost every LED bulb individually, and same thing for the Legion Go. And so that's really kind of highlighting the differences between your traditional glossy screen and that matte screen like you have on the deck. The OLED panel on the updated Steam Deck is a big upgrade, but it still sits in third place. The Ally's full 1080p display is everything you need from a gaming handheld. It's bright, it's punchy, and it's a great match for the performance of the system. Meanwhile, Lenovo went above and beyond with an 8.8 inch screen, though it is honestly kind of overkill for a device like this. Don't get me wrong, that 2560 by 1600 resolution and 144 hertz refresh rate are awesome, but you're never really gonna take full advantage of it. The Legion Go just isn't powerful enough to play new AAA games at 60 FPS with graphics turned all the way up, let alone at over 100 FPS. And if you're playing older retro titles, that pixel density has sort of a limited return on investment. But even so, it's hard to turn on a panel that looks this good. Even if it's XL dimensions, make the whole system kind of bulky. Moving on to software, where one of the biggest differences between these devices is the OS they're based on. In an attempt to provide wide compatibility with a huge library of PC games and digital stores, both Asus and Lenovo opted for Windows. The good thing about this is that downloading and installing games is a very familiar process. The bad part is that Windows simply isn't optimized for devices with screens this small, especially ones without dedicated mice or full-size touchpads. That means you often have to combine touch controls with the tiny touchpad on the Legion or the joystick on the Ally, which Asus thoughtfully tweaks so that it can move your cursor outside of games. It's usually enough to get the job done, but things still feel clunky. So to streamline their systems, Asus and Lenovo created apps that serve as central hubs for adjusting performance, tweaking settings, and browsing and launching games. And while Armory Crate and Legion Space are functional, there's always a sense that both are just kind of band-aids trying to mask the fact that Windows really, really needs a dedicated handheld gaming mode. You remember how Windows 8 had a dedicated tablet mode? Come on, Microsoft, can we do that again? But for handheld this time. Oh, and you know, make it good. Meanwhile, SteamOS is a true streamlined gaming platform. It's super simple to browse through your library, install games, or even buy new ones with just a couple taps. And while all three systems have handy buttons for summoning things like your game library or a quick settings menu, because of how much better integrated these functions are in SteamOS, it just feels so much smoother on the Steam Deck. However, the big limitation for Valve's machine is that it's tied to Steam itself. If you don't have a big library of games already purchased from Valve's digital store, the deck may lose some of its appeal. Granted, it's possible to install other game stores like Epic, Battle.net, and others, but it can be tricky for, you know, less tech-savvy gamers. The other thing to consider is compatibility, because while there are now over 10,000 titles playable on the Steam Deck, there are still some that just don't run or work right at all. This includes a handful of major games like some Call of Duty titles, and others like Dragon Age Inquisition that have various issues when installed on the Steam Deck. Even when things work perfectly though, the Steam Deck can't match the performance of the ROG Ally and the Legion Go. Both of these devices are powered by AMD's Ryzen Z1 Extreme chip, and thanks to their higher TDPs, they consistently pumped out more frames in games. I should mention that there is a version of the Ally over here that uses a less potent non-Extreme Z1 processor, and while I haven't tested it myself, the general consensus is that it's a bit underpowered, so you're better off sticking with the flagship model. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 800p on medium and FSR set to performance, all three systems were rather close. The OLED Steam Deck actually came out ahead at 55 FPS, followed by the Ally and the Legion Go pretty much tied at 46 and 45 FPS respectively. However, when I raised the TDP to 20 watts, the Lenovo jumped up to 68 FPS, and at 25 watts, the Ally hit 71 FPS, which is a pretty sizable gap. And both the Ally and the Legion actually top out at 30 watts, though you will need to be plugged into the wall to get that performance. Meanwhile, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p and high settings, and both of the Ally and the Legion set to 25 watts, the performance was, you know, pretty similar, as you'd expect from systems with the same chip. 
The Ally hit 63 FPS, while the Legion Go was only very slightly behind at 60 FPS. The one wrinkle to this is that to get those numbers, I had to install beta drivers and BIOS on the Lenovo. That's because currently there is a known issue with the Legion Go software that causes reduced performance when using the custom wattage setting. Now, normally this might not make a big deal, but because the Lenovo's performance mode is set to 25 watts instead of 25 like on the Asus, I had to use that custom wattage setting because that's the only way you can do a true apples to apples performance comparison. All this is saying that it's kind of understandably frustrating if you get a new Legion Go and then you suddenly are beset by a shiny handheld that kind of has underwhelming performance in specific situations. But if you remember, the Ally also had similar issues when it launched back in the summer. In fact, I found that the Ally is actually about five to 10% faster than it was back when I tested it four months ago, thanks to a number of patches from Asus. Now, at the time of shooting, Lenovo says it hopes to release updated drivers and software for the Legion Go in the coming weeks. So while the Ally currently has an overall edge in stability, I don't expect that to be the case forever. Regardless, if you're hoping to play games at 1080 or 1200p, you'll be way better off with either the Ally or the Legion Go. As for the Steam Deck, while it's not quite as powerful as those other two, it's still no slouch either. Of course, there are consequences to all that power, because for the Ally and the Legion Go, they do suffer from slightly diminished battery life compared to the Steam Deck. Lenovo tried to combat this by installing a larger 49.2 watt hour battery versus just 40 watt hours on the Asus. That said, you're still gonna want to keep a power adapter handy. That's because depending on the performance mode and the game you're playing, the Ally typically lasts around an hour and a half while the Legion Go gets closer to two hours. But if longevity is a really big deal to you, the clear choice is the Steam Deck, which consistently runs for between two and a half to three hours on a charge. And if you lower its TDP, you can make it last even longer. Okay, now let's do the hard part and try to pick a winner or not. Because while I know there are people out there who wanna crow about how their device is better than someone else's, at least when it comes to these three gaming handhelds, it's not that simple. Starting at $550 for the OLED model, which trust me is the version you want, the Steam Deck is my favorite. Heck, I even went out and bought this one partly so we could use it in the video, but also because I liked my old LCD one so much. And Valve's latest update basically addresses all of my complaints about the original model. Now, sure, it has a lower res 800p screen and it's not nearly as powerful as the Ally or the Legion Go, but it has the best battery life, it comes with a case, and those dual touchpads really do come in handy sometimes. But what really puts it over the top for me is Steam OS. Unlike its Windows rivals, which have to resort to custom launchers, the Steam Deck's UI makes it so easy to browse, launch, and even buy games all in a single place. Yes, installing games from third-party stores like Battle.net or Epic can be kind of a chore, but the sheer number of titles that have been verified to run on the Steam Deck is massive and that number is growing every day. So you're not exactly hurting for choices. And when it comes to little things like adjusting brightness or changing the TDP, doing so on the Steam Deck just feels smoother. If you're looking for a handheld with the simplicity of a console, but the power to play PC games, the Steam Deck is what you want. This doesn't make the ROG Ally or Legion Go bad choices though. The Ally is sleeker and has an ideal screen for this size of device. Also, while I'm not sure how long these prices will hold, right now you can get a 512 gig model with a Z1 Extreme chip for $600 instead of $700 like it was at launch. That's just $50 more than the Steam Deck and $100 less than a Legion Go. So if you want the most portable device that also is the best performance for the money, the ROG Ally is it. Then we have the Legion Go, which is kind of like the Land Rover of gaming handhelds. It's big, it's bulky, but thanks to its design, it can tackle a lot of different situations. You can remove its controllers and prop it up on its kickstand to use it as a tiny portable monitor. It also has dual USB-C ports, so you can easily connect it to a bunch of peripherals. And because both jacks support USB 4.0, you can hook up an external GPU without being locked into a proprietary ecosystem like you would be with Asus's setup. And then there's that screen. It's large and in charge. And when compared to the Ally, it's got slightly better battery life too. The main downside is that because the Legion Go just came out, Lenovo is still trying to polish up its software. So it may require a bit more fiddling or troubleshooting than the other two. Still, if you want the device with the biggest and best screen of the three, combined with a switch-like design and dual USB-C ports, 
the Legion Go is your champion. Honestly, as long as you consider what's really important to you and you select a device that best fits your criteria, you can't really go wrong with any of these. And while that might not be the kind of spicy conclusion that's gonna start fights on social media, as someone who just likes to be able to take their games on the go, this is a really encouraging outcome for the current crop of portable PCs. What do you think? Do you like the small, medium, and large, or I guess it's more of an extra large, version of the latest batch of gaming handhelds? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, stay tuned to Engadget for more news, reviews, and hands-ons.